Welcome all. Today we'll be discussing about natural resources. What is natural resource? Anything that we get from nature is natural and anything that has got certain utility in the life of mankind is considered as resource. So, any stock that can be drawn from nature is natural and anything which is useful to man or can be transformed into a useful product or can be used to produce a useful thing is considered as a resource. So, anything that is that has been given to us by mother nature and which has got utility in the life of mankind is termed as natural resource. For example, forest resource, water resource, land resource, food, energy, mineral, all these are natural resources. Now, we are coming to different types of natural resources. Resources based on origin are of two types, biotic resource and abiotic resource. Biotic resources are those which directly or indirectly influenced by the photosynthetic activities of the green plant like fruits, wood, then fodder, milk, meat, fish, leather, all these are biotic resources. And what is a biotic resource? A biotic resource uh, are those which do not involve any photosynthetic activity like fresh water, rock salt, chemical, all these are abiotic resources. Now we are moving to the next classification. Resources based on exhaustibility. Resources based on exhaustibility, we have two types of resources, renewable resource and non-renewable resource. Renewable resource are those which has the capacity to regenerate itself, like forest, solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy, all these has the capacity to regenerate itself and it will not re, um, distinguish, uh, sorry, uh, extinguish after a period of usage. So uh, these are called renewable resource. And what is non-renewable resource? Non-renewable resource are also called exhaustible resource. They do not have the capacity to regenerate itself. It has got, uh, it is present in nature in certain amount and after a usage, after its usage, it, it will extinguish. So they are uh, non-renewable resource, resource. They have no capacity to regenerate itself like mineral oil, coal, fossil fuel, natural gas, all these are non-renewable resources. Resources should be used judiciously, sustainably, so that um, our future generations can also use them for their own benefits. Now, we are moving to the next slide, which is forest resource. We'll be discussing about forest resource in this part. Forest resource is a very a forest wealth is a very important resource um, it is said that uh, about 33 percent of the country must cover under forest cover but at present according to 2019 data our country country at present has 21.67 percent of forest cover which is far below the um, required um, amount where Madhya Pradesh has the highest uh, forest cover and Punjab has the lowest. Now we'll discuss about uh, uh, the importance of forest. Forest mainly consists of trees. So uh, from the environmental point of view, we can say that forest regulates the water cycle, which is also known as hydrological cycle. Uh, trees produce oxygen by the process of photosynthesis. Trees absorb pollutants and makes the air clean and um, pollution free. Um, uh, in the process of photosynthesis, trees gives oxygen, releases oxygen and takes in carbon dioxide. So large tracts of forested lands are called sinks of carbon dioxide. Amazon is called the sink of carbon dioxide because the large dense forest of Amazon uh, said, is said to absorb huge amount of carbon dioxide. Again, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas which tends to increase the global effect of global warming. So um, tree, as, as trees and forests absorbs the carbon dioxide, so it reduces global warming. 
trees and forests are the habitat for a large variety of animals arboreal animals settle on the trees like birds squirrels uh, and other wide range of wildlife then trees also said to um, hold the soil together through its root system this root system tends to bind the soil particles together as a result it restricts soil erosion and in turn it conserves the soil so these are the environmental value of forest and the commercial value of forest commercially forests are um, uh, uh, has huge value for its timber pulp wood for uh, paper industries exotic fruits and spices fodder for animal rubber gum resin all are required in commercial markets fibers then medicine uh, forest is also valued for its medicinal properties then minerals all these are the commercial values a commercial importance of the forest now we'll discuss the reasons for deforestation what is deforestation deforestation is cutting down of trees is called tree deforestation here are certain factors for cutting down of trees causes for deforestation such such as the first one is shifting cultivation shifting cultivation is also known as jhum cultivation or um, burn and slash cultivation it is mostly practiced in the northeastern pa hilly parts of india and in this method the trees and the forested tracts are been cut and then burn the ashes of the burn forest is said to add minerals to the soil and make the soil fertile in this process large tracts of forested lands are being cleared then fuel a fuel requirement with growing number of population the requirement for fuel has also increased the growing demand has led to deforestation at alarming rate the forest based industries has the raw material which is procured from forest like paper industries which require huge amount of soft wood and as a result large tracts of forested lands are been cut down for the raw material developmental projects developmental projects like construction of multi purpose dams then uh, roadways highways requires to clear large tracts of forested lands So similarly uh, for construction of tehri dam large tracts of forested lands are, are have to be cleared so um, activist environmentalist sundarlal bahuguna uh, who led who was the leader of chipku movement stand against, stood against it similarly sardar sarovar sardar sarovar dam was also uh, faced certain activ environmental activists like medha patekar uh then uh, baba amte arunthuti roy all all of them stood against the develop uh, the construction of sardar sarovar dam now with the growing population the need for food also increased so large tracts of forested lands are being cleared for agricultural purpose then overgrazing has also led to deforestation and forest fire which which is sometimes natural as well as man made reckless picnickers um uh, ignite forest fire due due to this their careless recklessness these all causes destruction of huge tracts of forested land and as a result uh, the consequences are are uh, are been faced by entire um earth what are the consequences of deforestation the consequence the mo the most important consequence it threatens the existence of wildlife why uh, forests are the habitat for wildlife as because their uh, home is being destroyed the settlement is being destroyed their uh, their existence is threatened as a result what happens there is huge loss of biodiversity and genetic diversity of plants and animal the hydrological cycle is also getting affected due to deforestation deforestation also results in soil erosion as because the trees are being cut down the root system cannot hold and bind the soil particles as a result it is evoking soil erosion
and loss of soil uh, fertility and in in term in time it, uh, in the hilly tracts it also causes landslides and uh, lastly deforestation causes global warming sorry for the spelling uh, typo there's a typing mistake here it's global warming it is accelerating global warming deforestation is accelerating global warming at an alarming rate but to maintain a healthy environment and obtain a sustainable supply of a number of forest products natural forests should be carefully managed and conserved so for uh, conservation we should prevent deforestation and extend our forest wealth we should control the unregulated expansion of agriculture and cattle ranching at the expense of a natural forest we should also control unregulated uh, unregulated uh, grazing and destruction of green cover uh, then we should also control um, unregulated fuel collection fuel collection and timber harvesting we should also go for afforestation which is very important to maintain the ecological balance of the earth so this is all about deforestation and our forest resource now we'll move on to the next which is water resource water is an indispensable natural resource on its on this uh, earth and um, without water life is impossible so about 97% of the earth surface is covered by water most plants and animals have about 60 to 65% of water and um, this water is very important for uh, all life form uh, in the past few slides i have talked about hydrological cycle now we'll talk about what is hydrological cycle hydrological cycle uh, is the is a water cycle that endlessly uh, uh, circulates through the environment when the solar radiation falls on the water surface the water gets heated and evaporates as it evaporates it moves high and uh, and uh, comes in contact with cooler atmosphere where it condenses and form cloud when the cloud becomes very heavy and cannot hold it anymore it falls as raindrops or precipitation so this cyclic movement of water is called hydrological cycle it is also known as water cycle this is the method in which water is water uh, circulates within our environment now we'll discuss about the availability of water about 97.4% of the water that is available is salty or brackish so which is not suitable for our daily use but only 2.6% is fresh water about out of this 2.6% only 1.98% is available uh, is trapped in trapped in ice ice caps as uh, as fresh water so only 0.6% of the fresh water is available to us in form of ground water and surface water so so this ground water is the water that is present in subsurface that is under the surface of the earth is the ground water and surface water is the sur water that flows over the surface of the earth uh, like our rivers ponds then lakes all are a surface water this ground water is uh, present in aquifers aquifers are layers of rock that are highly permeable and uh, it contains the water so this this uh, water holding rock set or the sediment is called the which is highly uh, permeable is called the aquifer aquifers are, are again of two types confined aquifers and unconfined aquifers 
Unconfined aquifers are those which are laid by permeable earth material. Permeable means which has high porosity, which um, allows water or and air to move in and out. So, yeah, unconfined aquifers are um, are overlaid by permeable earth materials, and they are recharged by water seeping down from above in the form of rain or snow melt and confined aquifers are those which are sandwiched between two impermeable layers impermeable layers are those which do not allow any movement of air and water so when uh, confined aquifers uh, are sandwiched between two layers of, of impermeable layers of rock and they are recharged by uh, uh, intersection where the aqu uh, aquif aquifer come in contact with the surface of the earth which might be far away quite uh, from the actual source so this is all about your groundwater and uh, our surface water so this groundwater and surface water are are these two reserves are are for fresh water which are available to us now we'll discuss about so this flood flood is when there is excess of water um, and uh, when there's excess of water and which brings about great distress to man and uh, human lives and property it is called flood there are several causes of flood both uh, they can be natural as well as anthropogenic that is man-made causes some of the causes are like when there is high intensity of rain in the catchment area of the river the um, uh, river then uh, it causes flood because the more water is um, flows through the river channel and the downstream gets flooded again when there is sudden change in the channel gradient or there is blockage of the flow of a river then uh, the due to landslide the, in the upper reaches then the lower reaches uh, uh, tends to get flooded again when the river tends to meander or change and make uh, change its course then uh, it the river flood its banks then excessive deforestation and removal of plant cover causes um, excessive erosion as a result what happens there is siltation in the river banks uh, as a result of which the uh, excess water comes to the uh, the siltation in the river beds and excess water comes to the bank and floods its bank and there's also impact of urbanization and construction activity which causes flooding Floods can be controlled by reforestation and development of dense plant cover on the hilly slopes and land surface in the catchment area of the river. Then straighten the if we can straighten the course of the river, then we can hasten the flow uh, flood flow. Then we can reduce the volume of flood water by constructing. Um, reservoirs dams then uh, we can also make embankments to uh, constrict the flow of the river which also decreases the um, intensity of the flood so this is all about flood now we'll discuss about drought drought is when there is excessive um, uh, excessive uh, what should i say uh, deficit of water which causes the uh, soil uh, nearly impossible for the plants to grow lack of water where uh, plants cannot grow that condition is called drought this uh, drought is very detrimental uh, in terms it uh, it might stay for a longer period our state Bengal once feasted uh, in the year around mm, 
1769 in the year um, in the year, oops sorry in the year 1769 um, and which led to the uh, great uh, great famine of Bengal so this drought is very uh, what should I say very detrimental in terms of it causes huge loss of um, mankind so uh, this is all about excessive as well as deficit of water now we'll discuss about certain conflicts over water what happens as because the rivers do not uh, you know follow the boundaries of the uh, countries states or uh, or uh, states and so as a as a result what happens the water which is very valuable to mankind is not uh, like is under demand for all the conflict over water um, water distribution and sharing is throughout the world where there is river and the river has uh, traveled across the boundaries of two or more countries or state this problem persists it is also present in our country as well so uh, to talk about indus and its five tributaries that is jhelum chenab ravi bias and satluj all these all these uh, river system also make up uh, also passes through pakistan as well as india as a result in 1960 the indus valley treaty was established by which india uh, by which indus uh, then the jhelum and the chenab was were allocated to pakistan and satluj the ravi and the bias was were allocated to india Similarly, in South, the Kaveri water dispute uh, is been seen where the Kaveri River water is a uh, bone of contention between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, and uh, the problem is almost hundred years old. Tamil Nadu occupying the downstream region of the river wants water use regulated. In, up, in the upstream whereas the upstream state Karnataka refuses to do so and claims its primacy over the river as upstream user so such disputes are also seen in um, Satlej, Yamuna uh, the issue of sharing the Ravi Bias waters and Satlej Yamuna issue between Punjab and Haryana is um, is quite evident in the Iradi, tribu Iradi tribunal uh, the water was uh, allocated about 17.17 uh, million acre feet uh, feet of water was available uh, was uh, uh, um, available for uh, um, available to Punjab so worldwide this type of Water conflict is also seen in the Middle East, the three rivers, that is Jordan, the Tigris, Tigris and Euphrates and Nile are shared by Middle East countries. So there is also a water dispute re regarding this three rivers. Now uh, this is all about our water resources. Now we are moving to land resource land resource land is a finite and valuable resource upon which we depend for our food fiber fuel wood all are um, supported by our land so land is very important but our land is degrading one of the main cause of degradation is us we we are responsible for it what is land degradation when the when quality of the land degrades 
or the quality of the land uh, deteriorates to such an extent that it do not support um, growth of plants and uh, this uh, this process is called land degradation land degradation is caused when um, when there is excessive soil erosion water logging salinization and contamination with industrial waste like fly ash mud heavy metals which all causes land degradation and as a result of which the land becomes so much deprived of nutrients that it do not uh, allow trees or plants to grow as a result the land becomes barren and uh, such type of um, uh, such type of uh, deterioration of land is termed as land degradation now we'll discuss about soil erosion soil erosion literally means wearing away of the top soil when the top soil um, is washed away or blown away that is called soil erosion soil soil erosion is is caused cause, sorry, is caused by water wind biotic factors first we'll discuss about water so due to water what happens the top soil gets washed away in form of layers which is also known as sheet erosion when this uh, er uh, rate of this when this erosion is um, accelerated it forms finger like uh, rills or finger like grooves which are called rills and water running water passes through this finger like grooves which are called which is this type of erosion is called rill erosion and the and the next type is called the gully erosion it is more prominent type of soil erosion when the rainfall is very heavy then the rill um, extend it in breadth and height and the cavities um, increases resulting in formation of gullies which are u-shaped or v-shaped which for, forms gully erosion gully erosion is very much evident in um, chambal region which resulted in badland topography this uh, bad, when the when there is formation of badland topography such land do not support any any type of vegetation next is wind erosion wind erosion occurs through saltation suspension and surface creep saltation occurs when the when, when there is direct pressure of the wind and soil particles are verti are moved vertically that is saltation suspension is when the fine soil particles are uh, are blown away by wind and taken to distant places that is called suspension and surface creep when larger soil particles creep over the soil surface along with wind that is uh, soil creep and the last part and the last uh, uh, cause of soil erosion is biotic factor like a uh, overgrazing due to overgrazing the soil becomes bare to different agents of erosion like water wind glacier as a result of which the top soil gets eroded away shifting cultivation also makes the soil bare because cutting down and burning of the trees leads the uh, soil to uh, soil um, to leave, uh, leaves the soil bare and the top soil gets uh, exposed to erosion deforestation is also a cause for soil erosion and unstable uh, and farming on the unstable region also causes soil erosion how to prevent soil erosion first and only way is proper afforestation afforestation means planting of trees for afforestation is is a very important way to prevent soil erosion next is step farming step farming is also known as terrace farming where uh, steps are cut along the forest uh, so along the hilly slopes and farming is practiced on such terrain so that it restricts soil erosion contour farming is also practiced in some places to control the soil erosion then wind breaks and shelter breaks are uh, 
um, used like uh, they help in reducing the erosion um, by strong winds where uh, trees are planted in long rows along the cultivated land boundary so that the wind is blocked the wind speed is then substantially reduced which helps in preventing soil erosion of the soil the soil erosion is one of the most uh, critical problem of the world and which uh, seriously reduce the agriculture and forestry uh, production and uh, it also affects the um, quality of aquatic life as well due to increased um, siltation uh, the best way to control soil erosion is to maintain adequate vegetational cover over the soil now we'll discuss about desertification 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 um, desertification is degradation of land in arid semi arid and subhumid areas of the world due to primarily uh, due to human activities and climatic variations new deserts which are being created are not necessarily in hot and dry places instead they could be developed at any place where the soil has been uh, so mistreated by humans an anthropogenic effect that it has become useless for growing crops such regions have turned from green to uh, deserts gr lush green uh, forested or vegetated land to deserts as we can see in the picture nearly 75% of the world's drier lands uh, that is 45000 square kilometer are affected by desertification it has been um, estimated that about 35% of the earth's land surface is threatened by the prospects of desertification which could affect the livelihood of about 850 million people so it is a real uh, threat um, threat for us for our recklessness we are converting the lush green forested lands into dry deserts where plants vegetation cannot grow the main uh, causes for desertification are deforestation overgrazing and uh, mining and quarrying these are the main causes which contribute to desertification and um, uh, Among the most badly affected areas are the Sub-Saharan Africa, Middle East, Western Asia, parts of Central and South America, Australia and the western half of United States. So uh, desertification is posing a great hurdle in front of us in near future. So it is our duty to restore our land by um, by afforestation by scientific scientifically using the land so that we can restrict this deadly uh, detrimental process of uh, desertification now we will discuss about energy resource energy consumption of a nation is usually considered as a as an index of its development this is because Almost all the developmental activities are directly or indirectly dependent upon energy. And with growing population, the need of energy is ever increasing. So this energy is a very important resource in our present day modern life. We, this energy is used in each and every daily activities of each and every one of us. So... Uh, this energy is of two types one is the conventional energies another one is the alternative energy conventional sources of energies are the conventional ones that that uh, that are that have been used from in um, from um, since times immemorial man has been using diverse sources of energy like 
fossil fuels like coal petroleum then uh, natural gas hydropower nuclear energy these are all conventional energy these are the energies we use and there are certain alternative energies like like our wind power where turbines are used to produce energy through wind where energy from uh, ocean are being harvested like tidal energy energy of the wave then thermal energy of ocean geothermal energy direct uh, uh, energy uh, entrapped from si uh, solar radiation these are all um, non conventional or alternative energies there is also energy which can be produced from petro plants petro plants belongs to a a uh, um a number of plant belonging to families of certain uh, species which produce latex and um, liquid gaseous fluid gaseous fu um, fluid which are which can be used just as petroleum so they are called petro plants then there is a um, biogas all these are alternative energies this hydrogen as a natural fuel so these are all alternative energies there are conventional energies as well as alternative energies there's also another segregation where there is renewable energy and non renewable energy renewable energies are the energies which uh, has a source um source in um which whose sources are uh, like uh, are in nature where which are uh, which are which are uh, which can be renewed which can be regenerated and non renewable sources are those which uh, whose reserve whose reserve is limited and once used it might extinguish so these are non renewable energies under renewable energy we have solar energy wind energy hydro power geothermal energy then um uh, uh solar energy i have said then um, we have um tidal energy biogas all these are are um, renewable energy and non renewable energies are like fossil fuels coal then uh, your nuclear natural gas these are all are non renewable energies renewable energies are uh, like uh, which can be generated continuously in nature and are inexhaustible and non renewable energies are energies which uh, have a, a have accumulated in nature over a long span of time and cannot be quickly replenished when exhausted so so it is always um a uh, suitable uh, it is always preferable to use renewable energy rather than non renewable energy the indian efforts in the direction of utilizing alternative energy sources has been centered on utilization of solar thermal energy conversion of solar energy into electricity wind energy and biomass based on resources uh, energy resources so this is all about natural resource thank you